Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. Why are there dead people here? Welcome to the Ascalon Club. Hmm. Oh, they're... They're not people. They're, um... Prewingard. There has been quite a battle here. Indeed. That might explain why there's sh there's fire. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. And the money that I'm taking, either, as well. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the shots heard outside and all that. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Let me loot the whole place. That was not necessarily the best thing that I just did. Can go back in. It's locked. It is locked, isn't it? Is that... A roiling sky, or is that... The ocean? Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing else down here. What a lovely chandelier. Three people. Those two are new. This guy keeps showing up. He looks a little bit like Dr. Swansea. A little bit. Key to Ascalon Club's basement. What? I think I know where that is. Okay. That might be a bad thing to do before we we talk to the bosses. Or maybe it's a good thing. A good dagger. What what is it for? Blood absorption. Remarkable dagger. Oh, it's better. Is it better than my perfect Linston knife? Uh, knife? No. No, no, it isn't. It's the same. It's the same. Let's go down. I think. Oh man, I can practically smell the must in here. These walls trap so much moisture. It's so complicated to get this without mold. Oh my god, and they have the... Yeah, this place would be bad for your lungs. If you weren't a vampire. So far, nothing terrible. As Ascalon members, we always tend to respect etiquette. We are, in all ways, members of the good society, sometimes recognized as public, public figures. We do not find our delight in orgies and bloodbath like our adversaries assert we do. And if one of us were caught in such caricatured and immoral act, he would receive the appropriate opprobrium. But what about the blood? What about its recreational use? How could we deny the ecstasy the vermilion ambrosia brings us? And with, with what else could we toast with as any good fraternity should? To answer this del delicate question, the law of conduct inside the club goes as follow. 
As long as the original mortal vessel is not brought inside our walls, each member is allowed to drink whatever he wants for his own usage or to share it with friends. Drink what you want, deal the way you want with the original vessel, but never inside the club. Unless I personally authorize it on some special occasion, of course. Oh. So they're... It's just... A fr it's a fraternity thing. It's just... It, they don't... They, they don't really have rules, do they? Oh. The Ascalon Club is an association of gentlemen secretly aiming for the protection of the Crown's interests. I founded it in 1837 to honor and perpetuate the legacy of my maker, William Marshall. Oh, we have heard of William Marshall before. First Earl of Benbroke and true protector of England. All the members of the club must be of good extraction and flawless moral fiber, since the club accepts more mortal members who will be duly observed and valued as proper candidates for immortality. The goal of the club is to impose respectable traditions and behaviors amongst the good vampire society, but also to promote and expand the imperial hegemony of England. We are the true elite of British society. We are Ascalon, the holy lance held by St. George's protector of England when the saint slew the dragon. As lance bearers ourselves, we vow to defend the empire's interests. Yeah, I don't I don't think St. George slew the dragon, historically speaking. But I think William, the other person, uh, was definitely a... Or, or is supposedly an historical figure. Good evening. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bansher was no match for him. Hear, hear, hear! hear. hear. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I've been eager to make your acquaintance. I've heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? Yes, she is. I may even say I admire her probity and her kindness. She has helped me since I was reborn. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this skull plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why have you asked me here? Because the crisis is escalating. Our enemies, the Garda Prewen, have even launched an open hunt. The only way to calm things down is to put an end to the epidemic. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed, but first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? 
Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. What does it mean? to be a member of the Ascalon Club. It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. Hmm. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. How very British. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is, Is his blood pure? pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. That was a little bit gross. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! Talk to Lord Redgrave. 
I personally went patrolling last night in the West End, and I spotted at least two foreign Ekons. This is an outrage. We shall chase these intruders down. I was chased by a gigantic Valkod two nights ago. I thought it was Fergal coming back, but no. That creature barely spoke English. I, they, I don't think they do at all speak. They just say, ugh. What is that? Oh, those are horses. It's like a, a jockey. I'm gonna need to meet all these people. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Askelon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. So I may be able to tell if people are vampires by actually listening to their hearts. I didn't notice that before. I was going very much by the just the fact that they had red things and going around when I looked at them. That's why I didn't notice before. That's why I couldn't really judge if people were vampires or not. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years, and will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member, and a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Hmm. Fair enough. Aloysius Dawson. He's famous? Mr. Dawson. Of Dawson and Dawson. Oh. The wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Fair enough. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods, but brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. 
What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. Huh. The deserved from the infected masses. Complete isolation has proven effective throughout history, but the death toll has always been a high one. I am glad you understand the concept of necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? Removed from all mortal concerns? Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Doctor. I was that just went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparrow. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. Yes. You were spying on me. Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Banshaw was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Vulcod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. Mm, the, the large beasts are more akin to werewolves. You do know I killed him. Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally. But I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish, and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skulls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club, and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. Mesmerize level increase. I think to level four. How is your investigation going, Dr. Reed? Time is our enemy. I have a few questions for your lordship. All right, but be quick. What can you tell me about the Great Hunt? It's a major concern. And I'm convinced we'll only get a satisfactory conclusion by putting an end to the epidemic. I have already met Geoffrey McCullum. I am certain he will persist until he has killed every last vampire. The Guard's current successful recruitment campaign is driven by the ravenous behavior of the Skulls. I see. 
So without the epidemic creating scowls, the guard could not convince anybody of our presence. Exactly. Once we have put the epidemic behind us, we need only wait until the guard grows old and weak. Time will once again become our ally. <laughs> what about the risk of a full-scale attack here? Geoffrey McCullum is a daring leader. That is exactly why so many of our number have left the country until things improve. But not me. I founded this club. I'll die defending it. You made me swear on the blood of William Marshall during my initiation ceremony. Why was that? William Marshall was the most glorious knight who ever lived. He served five kings and was a living example of probity for all. And he was my maker. William Marshall was a vampire? Is this some sort of joke? Wait. Could he be my maker? That would be joyful news. For it would mean he still walks among us. But alas, the great knight has left this world for good. Why is his blood so sacred to the Ascalon Club? He was simply the greatest defender of the realm we have ever known. I fought by his side at the Battle of Preston, and he made me his progeny following the fight. May I ask you about the mortal who attended my initiation, Mr. Aloysius Dawson? A member of the club does not normally ask questions about other members. We trust each other mutually. So he really is a member then? Indeed. Only the most eminent members are allowed to attend such ceremonies. Hmm. Even if I admit some of us fled during the first hours of the Great Hunt. But Mr. Dawson is mortal. Are you not afraid he might reveal who you are? Especially to your enemies. Aloysius Dawson is a man of his word, as are all of us. This is the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. We do not grant access to the unworthy. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Godspeed, Dr. Reed. We are counting on you. I didn't actually get any new info on him. I'm sure you have more important things to do than talking with an old man like myself.